right, so our last speaker, but not least, is going to be Randy, and he's going to talk about the metric system, which, quite frankly, it's bullshit that we don't use. So I don't know where he comes out on that. I can assume with this opinion. Um, but yeah, so he, well, please welcome Randy to the stage. I'm sure he has credentials or something. Okay, I'm seeing it there. Okay. Well, one thing you need to know is that uh, French fries, they're not French, first of all. They're French cut, in case you didn't know. The other thing is, is that the uh, metric system, um, it's uh, not French either. It was actually invented by Englishman John Wilkins on Monday, April 13th of 1668. Yeah, we even know the day. <laughs> and yes, in England. <laughs> now, he defined quantities. He, uh, he was took and uh, there was this high-tech device at the time. It was called the seconds pendulum. In one second, it went back and forth. I said, hey, that's, that's really great. We'll take that, and we'll take that, and uh, we'll go ahead, and we'll uh, take a tenth of it, and we'll make a cube out of it, and that's what we call the leader today. He said, hey, why don't we fill this with water? And when he did, well, we had the leader. So, um, this was long before the French, I, I can't go into this, I usually give an hour talk on this, but uh, if you want to hear, go to, come to my other talk, I'll tell you all about the, the details. But the first question is, why use the metric system? Well, I can speak personally that I use it because I'm essentially lazy. <laughs> now, if you really have to have a real reason then maybe because it costs each of you about 16 bucks a day not to use it. The, uh, the other problem is, is that it causes about 98,000 unnecessary deaths each year in the U.S. Uh, that's according to the Swedes, not me. <laughs> uh, not adding it costs about 10 to 15 percent of the, uh, on to all of everything we build in the United States. And Luckily, we also get to maintain two sets of tools, metric and ye old English, when the rest of the world has one set of tools. And by the way, to stop any questions in the future, that's not Gilligan, that's Maynard G. Krebs, the G stands for Walter. Thank you. That's no, oh, please, little buddy. Um, now, this is who does not use the metric system. <laughs> and, um, you know, in the immortal words of uh, George Goebel, if anyone knows who that even is today, uh, he said, do you ever feel like the, the, the world is a tuxedo and you're a pair of brown shoes? <laughs> yeah. So we're pretty lousy at this, uh, but who's pretty good at it? Well, it turns out that my poster child is indeed the uh, Australians. And you'll see over here, this is the rainfall. What's that? The uh, rainfall right here is all in millimeters, as nature intended it. <laughs> and uh, so let's talk a little more about Australia. Let's talk about Australian housing construction. And what is there interesting about it? Well, first of all, the Australian construction drawings are all in millimeters, which generally causes chuckles from technical people because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They have a rule, in fact. They say you cannot use centimeters. They are not to be used. No calculations are to be done. They're never to be written down. Don't think about using them, okay? 
The, uh, now, the Australians understand that we have these things called Arabic numerals. They're really fantastic. You can make really big numbers and understand what they mean. And the Australians use this. Now, here is a wall plan from Canada, who, by the way, uh, publishes stuff like this, but does not use metric to build anything up there because they have a really bad neighbor to the south. <laughs> and if you notice, there's 2,400 and 800 and 1,800, and you know, I think most kindergartners could handle this. And the Australians, they go from uh, 600 meter, millimeters center to center. And why? Because it, you can divide it by 24 different ways. So, uh, the Canadians offered this with their stuff, with their, uh, that last figure. And if you take a look, this is awful because it's dual scale. I know to an American it does not look dual scale, but it has meters and it has millimeters on it. And they say you can do this. Well, no, no you shouldn't. The Australians, it's a thousand millimeters and a meter. And that's what they use, is nothing but millimeters when they build a house. They never have to use a decimal point, ever. Here is that same wall plan in Imperial. Oh yeah, look at that. See that? Let's, let's use two different ways to describe the same distance. And hell, let's throw in some three over eight where we don't even bother finishing up our, uh, you can't even divide it into a decimal or anything. So, you know, we've got some questions. I've already pointed out that, uh, you know, why do we use two? And then why do we divide a ruler into six incompatible scales? <laughs> here, here it is. They've got them. They, you can get ones where you can just choose whichever one, so you can just add them together. And by the way, add that for me quick, will you? Now take a look, there you go. So we have one, this is our, our rulers. So yeah, the one, as you notice, has the longest line, and, and then the half has the next little lower, shorter line, and the quarter a little lower, and the eighth a little lower, smaller, and the sixteenth a little smaller. And of course you immediately recognize them when you look at them each time, right? And of course there's a 32nd at the beginning, and uh, you'll have to look at my metric day uh, blog to discover why we have only 30 seconds of an inch on the first inch and the last inch of rulers. Ever thought about it? Yeah. That's what I do. I think about stuff like this. Here is the, <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, the, uh, this is what a metric millimeter ruler looks like. It's really easy. If you are here, it's 502. You don't have to do anything else. That's, that's really, that's, that's it. When you're building a house, you just number, done. So it's easy to read. And let's suppose we wanted to add 9 millimeters plus 11 millimeters plus 2. You have 22, right? Very nice which is the same as 3 eighths plus 7 sixteenths plus 3 thirty seconds. I, I don't make our measurement system, I just report it. <laughs> so, the centimeter was sort of added as a pseudo inch a long time ago, and uh, there's a real fascination with it in places like Britain and stuff. They are actually really metric, but uh, when you use millimeters, you get a quick metric transition. Uh, no one has successfully metricated an industry using centimeters. Some early adopters, if you, you can still go to France, which don't ever learn your metric system from the French. They don't know anything about it. <laughs> You'll see this on French and Italian drawings on business or on building sites. And a lot of Americans, unfortunately, catch on to this very quickly what 1.30.7 is. Yeah, that's two decimal points, and it's meters dot centimeters dot millimeters, yes. So they can even use metric worse than we use our crappy system. The Australians, 
1307, get rid of two symbols. Simple, done. Large numbers are your friend. You can handle this. It's, you know, anything small, this idea of we have to have little small things, you know, that goes back to Roman numerals. And of course, the millimeters, centimeters problem is used, has been discussed for, well, quite a while. So how long? Well, here's a guy, a quotation where he says, you know, we really, millimeters are really the only thing to use and centimeters really are just awful and no pays attention to them. And that was the uh, president of the Baldwin Locomotive Company in 1921 <laughs> saying this. And there's Pat Naughton who uh, basically says pretty much uh, you don't ever end up with a metrication if you use centimeters. Um, common rulers in the U.S. are sold with centimeter divisions on them. So let's take a look at that. Uh, yeah, and they're marked incorrectly, by the way, and they're unnecessarily complex. So here's one that I had one day, and I was working with some people talking, and one of them said, wow, I never thought a millimeter was that big. Well, yeah, you can see that because you say that's marked millimeters, right? Well, you know, I would go around and I found another uh, ruler, and well, oh, here, this one, it's centimeters, but that's a centimeter. What are these things in between? Are they tenths of millimeters? Are, I mean, tenths of centimeters, are they millimeters or? Well, the answer is, is that somebody at Office Depot of all places realized that actually both of them are on here. <laughs> Me, how about if we just have a millimeter ruler like nature intended? 10, 20, 30, nice, simple, no points, no nothing. I really think if we had more rulers like this in the world, it'd be a better place. Uh, Pat Naughton was the uh, person who uh, first uh, enlightened me. He's from Australia and worked tirelessly in his life. Uh, he worked for a place called A.V. Jennings in Australia. And um, during the 1970s, way back then when Australia actually changed, uh, he tells a story about uh, the head of A.V. Jennings that thought this metric thing's a little, eh, you know. So, and he had enough money that he actually built, he had two houses built. One of them was dimensioned in imperial, and the other was dimensioned in metric. They built them, they kept all the scrap there, and they were going to keep track of it. Interestingly enough, the imperial house took two five-ton trucks of waste to be hauled away. The metric house was less than a wheelbarrow. You starting to see that 16 bucks a day I was talking about? So, Pat Naughton, unfortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago, very nice man. And after he was gone, some of us kind of put together things from his lectures that uh, you should remember uh, about metrication. The first thing is, Naughton's first law is dual scale instruments are evil. <laughs> if you put them on there, you'll add a couple hundred years because no one will use the other side. It's, and, and almost every metrication he's seen, and he was the guy that helped Australia metricate, this occurred. Second thing is, prefer measures without decimals. Uh, the thing is, is, is that you know, you don't have to have a decimal point. We already proved that with Australian construction. You, don't even, you can give a guy, you know, uh, Jethro Bodine can do it. <laughs> and so his third law is don't change measures in midstream. I was taught in college, I went to engineering school, they said, oh boy, you know, you, you get to a thousand millimeters, that's a meter and you better change it. No, you can have, the side of a house can be 23,000 millimeters. It won't, it doesn't hurt. Your brain, Arabic numerals, they work really good. The fourth one, have I said this enough? No centimeters, no centi anything, no centigrams, no centiliters, no centi period. Get rid of the prefix cluster around unity, which is these hectos and decis, all the things you forgot when your teacher mentioned them to you one day. <laughs> Just continue to forget them, but remember the other parts. The metric system, it's better by a thousand. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> and 
And this is a real quick slide. I just, uh, in, in uh, other countries, they tend not to use these commas. But you notice everything goes in thousands, and they put spaces. So you can just kind of sound out what the metric quantity is if you learn them. You just look at it, and boom, 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 done. Let's try doing that with our stuff. <laughs> now, I love this. I stole this from Pat Naughton because I love it. It was in one of his talks. Here is how people, they act like they're telling you something, and they don't. Here it is, it says, from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, I love this, non-renewable fuels used to generate electricity include back, black coal, 53.576 kilotons. Yeah, I'm sure it's good to three places. Brown coal, 65. And then over here, natural gas, we go to 292 comma terajoules. Hydroelectricity, well, 1567 gigawatt hours, or gigawatt hours if you're American. And, well, we're talking about energy, and the metric system has exactly one energy unit, the joule. So how about we just have 1,600 petajoules from black coal, 1,000 from brown coal, 290 from natural gas, and 56 from hydroelectricity. You can immediately get the information out of this. And what, what is this? And I see this in newspapers all the time. There's just no information transmitted. And they should be, you know, this is as bad as uh, enumeracy. Feral units. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're out in the field, running around, doing whatever they feel like doing, and they're killing people a lot of times. It's, I, I've had, actually, I have had uh, about three different women email me thanking me for doing the stuff I do on my blog. And they said, I overdosed my child. And, you know, it, it, it's really bad. Well, here's the thing from 1902. The Journal of the American Medical Association saying, please go to metric. Um, because teaspoons and tablespoons, they're a factor of three. We confuse the, uh, the abbreviations all the time. And it's just really bad. In milliliters? They're integers, just like millimeters, you know, you, you, just integers. Now, I want you to take note, there's September 20th, 1902, Journal of the American Medical Association. Here is the Journal of the American Medical Association in May of this year, <laughs> pointing out all the overdoses caused by this. In fact, one child unfortunately died. Yeah, and in the article, you know that we're, you know, here, we here in the United States, we're we're really trying, but you know, this isn't something that's going to happen overnight, and that's probably the truest statement you can imagine at this point. Um, I'll try to go over this quickly. I, I love pointing out just stupid things. Here is uh, screws that in the United States, and they are coming number zero through number 12, and then they switch to one quarter to one. So why, what are these sizes? Well, first of all, these are gauge sizes, and gauge sizes, by the way, don't mean anything. So then we have these. Well, it turned out that there were two different companies building screws, and they had two different designations. So what you do in America is you just jam them together, and there you are. So they're used to the quarter 20 and the number 14 were almost identical and screwed up all the time. So the answer was, well, just quit making number 14, please. Metric, let's see, M1 is one millimeter, M4 is four millimeters, M12 is 12 millimeters. So if you wanted to get a drill bit for an M12, maybe a 12 millimeter drill bit would fit. Good luck. <laughs> Metric cooking, something I have to do now that I've, I've cooked for three or four years. I can't even stand going back. The thing about metric cooking is use grams. No more decimals. They're the millimeter of mass. Um, milliliter, the millimeter, and uh, these units all produce integer values just like the Australian business industry. Now let's have a little quiz. Huh? So, which way is more, a pound of feathers or a pound of gold? 
Oh, really? The feathers. Feathers are weighed in his Bonapoi pounds, which are 453 grams, and gold is weighed in Troy pounds, which is 373 grams. It's your system. I don't understand the problem. Okay, well, I'll give you another shot. How about which way is more an ounce of feathers or an ounce of gold? The same? Oh my goodness, no, it's gold. <laughs> because in his Vata point ounce is 28.35 grams, and a gold troy ounce is 31. Why? Well, because there are 12 troy ounces in a troy pound, keep this in mind if you buy silver, and 16 in his Vata point pound. Isn't it good we don't have the metric system? Here's another one. I was watching Jeff Foxworthy one night, and, uh, and he said, are you smarter than a fifth grader? And he said, how many inches are in three yards? And this poor woman, she calculated, she finally got it right. It was uh, 108 inches. So let's ask, you know, it would have been uh, essentially the equivalent of what's in uh, Grant's tomb if you asked the metric question, because how many millimeters are in a meter? Well, it's 1,000. How many meters are in a kilometer? Well, it's a thousand. How many milliliters are there in a liter? A thousand. How many, how many grams are in a kilogram? A thousand. Okay. How many inches are in a mile? We're in the Mile High City, right? 63,360 for those who need to know. And so the other thing is, is that if you really know your system, how many barley corns are there in an inch? Well, three, from the center of the kernel, full and round. And yes, your shoe sizes are based on barley corns. I'm not making this up. I saw the Nerd Night poster, and clearly the thing I wanted to point out is if you look at Pinky and the brain, they're looking downward with anger, and then the platypus is actually Australian. And he's looking down, kind of ticked off too. And when I looked at the poster carefully, I realized why. They put centimeters. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, that was that. Okay. So the metric system, remember, it's better by a thousand. Okay, so some questions? Thank you. Oh, right there. Ah, where do I buy my rulers? The answer up until about six months ago was Australia. I know people in Australia and they send them to me. I'm not making that up. This year, for the first time ever, and I have a blog on the 10th, my metric day blog, because you all know 1010 is metric day, right? Um, there is actually a place, a Japanese company, that will sell millimeter rulers, all millimeter, no dual scale. I bought one, they're great. And in fact, that uh, the small uh, ruler was, uh, the, was one of those, I think it's Shinohara, I can't remember, it's a Japanese company. But uh, good luck finding, there's one metric tape measure that you can buy with millimeters on it. Really tough. Yes, sir. Will, will, the housing, will the U.S. housing industry convert to metric? No. <laughs> what reason do they have? Uh, no, I, I, I've, every time I've ever talked to anybody, I, I get lectures about being French or something, so, you know. Ah, over there. Oh, wait a minute. They're forcing someone.
Really? That's a, it's politicians. Um, no, I, I really uh, try and be a little, little more serious. Hector, Hector Vara wrote a, a PhD thesis in 2010 comparing uh, U.S. and Mexico and why we didn't. And his argument was that America is not really a nation. It's a confederation of states loosely held. And anytime you want to stop anything, it's almost really easy to do. Um, and when I give my, my hour-long talk, uh, believe it or not, Colorado has a real, tried their best, much like other things, to put the metric system through. In 1905, the later governor, governor of Colorado, John Shafroth, put in a bill for every year from 1896 to 1922, trying to get the metric system as the exclusive system of the United States. And it was, the, the board was stacked with anti-metric people every time by big business and not gonna happen. Uh, yes, sir. I, you have asked, he asked uh, how do we end up with two liters of soda? I have been looking for that forever. I have tried to find out how somebody, it's like liquor, somebody didn't get the memo that they didn't have to do anything. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I honestly, I am trying to figure that out. Sir. What? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, if, if, if I, think, I think, first of all, that the French helped us with this revolution thing, this, you know, and the other thing is, is that Britain has completely convinced me, if you look, I have one called a metric England in my blogs where they sent me their junk mail. It's all, you look in all their Home Depot stuff there, it's all millimeters. It's, doors are in millimeters, everything. He sent it to me to prove to me that yes, England's metric. Quit saying we aren't. So, and so apparently, you know, I think, I think you know, most of it, the French thing, I don't know, I think it's just basically we have, uh, we don't have a, a political system that, that'll do it. They just won't do it. It's, it is called SI. Ah, System International, that's the problem. Oh, someone over there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, other, okay, she's asking what are, what are the, uh, the reasons that uh, we uh, have so many deaths. The, the Swedes did a study on this. And of course, it was really useful because they point out in the study that it was really great that one country decided not to become metric so they could study this. <laughs> but um, they, they, it was mostly misdosages, mis, uh, mis almost always. And uh, right now, I, I gave this talk in front of a, a group of 25 about uh, a month ago, and there was a nurse there, and she just went, oh, you, you can't believe it, she said, they, they sit down, they weigh everybody in pounds, they convert it back to kilograms, they do their calculations for uh, figuring out dosage, and then they convert it back. And she says, do you know how many chances there are for errors? And I looked at her like, wow, really? By hand? So I think you're looking at most of it right there. Um, a lot of it's uh, just missed dosages. And one more. Okay, I can't see anybody, but way back, yes, you, sir. Mm -hmm. He wants to know why is there so much waste? Because people can't measure and they cut everything wrong. I have a friend of mine who's a mechanical engineer, and when I was talking with him about this, he said he's been on construction sites with people who've worked for 20 and 30 years that still can't read a ruler. What they do a lot of times is they'll go, you know, this should be like 10 bricks. So they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and don't even measure because, well, our rulers bite. But the majority of it is just mistakes. Okay, I guess, I think, I think we're done. And thank you very much for listening to it. I appreciate it. Huge. Give it up for Randy. That was amazing.